Hi, Maria Shaleos from the KSL Greenhouse Show. And today we are in Willard, Utah, and I have with me Laurel and David Butts, and we are in your orchard. And the reason we're here is you have come up with a new kind of peach. I don't want to call it a new variety of peach, but you've come up with a new idea to make peaches more interesting and more beautiful. And we're talking about zebra peaches. So David, start out, talk about how you came up with the idea or why you came up with the idea for zebra peaches. Well, that's a good question. Uh, a few years ago, uh, we had a, a bad business deal with a, a buyer. He, uh, he got us caught short right in the middle of the harvest. He said he didn't want any more peaches. Well, we got stuck with all these peaches and not a way to market them. And I thought we needed to find a way to distinguish our product, our peaches, from everyone else on the highway because there's a lot of people that sell peaches on the highway. And so I came up with the idea, what if we made them look different and altered the appearance? And that's when I started thinking, maybe we could put some kind of a mask on a peach. And this is where my wife, uh, Laurel, is a genius because I tried all the, these different ideas on how to mask the peach, but they didn't work. When he had the idea of making a zebra peach or a peach look like a zebra in a zebra pattern, I'm thinking that would be impossible. Well, and it was last year that he decided to do that. So we tried a couple ways, failures. I'm going, there is no way. I almost gave up. I'm almost, you know, there is no way. He's very insistent. And I'm going, okay, this is, I, I've got to go to the, to the um, Lord above. And how am I going to make a zebra peach? A thought right then came to my mind. And now we have zebra peaches. I wanted them to look like zebras. So I had to be particular about how I cut the material that we use for the mask. And as I cut it, I had to make sure um, that it wasn't going to fall off the peach because if it fell off the peach, what good would that be? And I, you, you look at a zebra and their stripes are kind of the same some places and then different some places. I had to make it so the pattern was not exact, yet not fall apart, so yet be able to adhere to the peach. We tried different kinds of plastics and nylon stockings, you know, women's hosiery, and that didn't work. And uh, to stop short of actually telling you what kind of material we used, Suffice it to say that she was able to use scissors and cut out this material because the material has to expand as the peach matures. Because if the if the if it constricts as it adheres to the peach. Yes, if it if it constricts the peach it will die. And we did find peaches that were dead that had fallen off the trees that where the product didn't work on it. And so this one had to grow with the peach. And of course she had to install them a month ago before the peach is colored. You have to be very careful with it. The, the way I actually came up with the idea was observing that the peaches would color differently when the leaves were covering a peach it would block the sunlight and it would create a lighter pattern underneath the leaf and I thought well that that really might work if we mask the peach uh, and, and conceal parts of the peach perhaps that would uh, that would block the light from uh, from coloring so uh, that's that's how we came up with with the idea that it could be be viable and so so what we're thinking about doing Maria is is putting together a package or a kit with a video on how to uh, install these masks uh, on your own so if there's something that we could market it would be a kit and we will actually uh, let the cat out of the bag next spring and and see if there's any interest in that so anyone that has an orchard will be able to do it also and that's that's the whole thing is we want to share this with everybody we don't want to just keep it to ourselves. And so we're going to wait. Timing's kind of uh, important, of course. They, they would need to know the appropriate time to put the mask on. And that would be probably sometime in, in Utah. In other parts of the country, California would be different. But in Utah, it would be in July, about the third week of July, right as the peaches start to show color. And size, because if you put them on when they're too small, then um, they you don't get the effect. And if you put them on when they're too big, then they're colored too much. It doesn't give you the right coloring. How does it impact the flavor of the peach? That is a really good question. We don't know. We haven't had any yet. Uh, the peaches are, are still not quite ripe. 
Uh, we do know a couple of things. We have pulled the mask off on some of these peaches a week ago, and then they start to fill in red again. And so you can yeah. see that if the Timing mask is, is removed prematurely, then they will turn red. The, the sunlight will discolor the rest of the peach and just fill it in. And as we go around the orchard, you'll see some that are done like that. Uh, these, these here, I pulled the mass off these yesterday, and so they and they will be ripe in the, just a few days. And so this uh, this Saturday on the 29th, we'll we'll have them available uh, for for folks. About eight years ago, we planted these trees as, as little uh, bare root trees uh, from a nursery up in Washington. They were had, had them shipped. This tall. They came in the mail from UPS and. We dug all the holes by hand and planted the trees. These are called, this variety of peach is called an elegant lady peach. It's a really dark red peach. And uh, we like it because it stays a little bit firmer. It doesn't, it's not as quite as perishable as other peaches. And then we also have some that are uh, rosa peach trees. We have about 20 trees that are roses. Uh, all in total, we have about 200 trees. They and we're are still, very good. These are my favorite peaches. We purchased this type of, of uh, variety, more of a table fare, mm -hmm. but, but we've had people that have canned the peaches as well and bottled them and, and they said they work out really well, make jam out of them. One of the um, things with peaches is if the skin comes off pretty easy and if the pit comes out pretty easy, if they have to drill the pit out, that's the pits. But <laughs> But um, these are okay with pits, free pit. And the skin, you boil them, and the skin comes off pretty easy. So as all uh, farmers know, you have to thin your peaches. And, uh, and the thinning, you come in, and, and I know that uh, Tom Bettis suggests six inches between each peach. Uh, I didn't get that information soon enough because some of these are crowded if you look close. And that's not what you want to do, like these here are bunched up. So sometimes you miss some when you're thinning. Uh, but they, uh, for the most part, these are spaced pretty well, but uh, they do need to be thin and that's labor intensive. And when you're thinning them, um, what happens is you think that you're taking too many peaches off. You think you're leaving too big of a space. You want to keep that fruit. Well then later, as they've grown, you realize you should have taken them off because they're not allowing the room for the peach to get bigger. Uh, you, you want them uh, really nice and like, so, so I just picked this one. Baseball. Yeah, yeah, the, like a baseball a size or bigger. Like uh, a softball. A softball would be really big, but, but this, is, uh, this is a really good size. And, and for marketability, people don't want to buy little peaches. They want to buy these great big peaches. Really? This is more of, for us, it's been a gimmick to, to sell peaches on, on the highway, if you will. Uh, but it's, it's turning into to something more than that. We've had uh, an Instagram page and a Facebook we've posted to uh, Utah Gardeners and it's just kind of blowing up. Yeah. And a lot of people are really Unexpected. interested. We, we didn't know that, that that was gonna be the case. We were just trying to market the food. So the first thing was just to try to market what small amount we have because uh, we only have, like I said, 200 trees, they, they produce about 4,000 pounds of peaches, and that's it. Then this, the supply is gone. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if there's, it would be wonderful if people could learn how to do it themselves. If we could put a kit together where anyone that has even one tree in, in their yard would like to, to play around with it and make different, uh, different patterns. They don't have to be stripes like, like the zebra stripes. I, next spring, this has been kind of a prototype year. Mm -hmm. We haven't tried this before. And now that we've had some success, now, now your imagination can go wild, kind of. And we can think, well, if you can do stripes, maybe you can put other shapes, hearts on them, or yeah. someone's name on them with a stencil, or something like that. And so we're going to play around with that idea, I think, uh, would be the most uh, unique and fun for, for the average person. I don't want to mislead anybody sure. that it's, this isn't a not genetic, you do for your it's, not, and it's not genetic, it's more of a visual thing. Mm -hmm. and, and the treat really was for us was when we started to remove the mask to see if it was working. And when we pulled the f first mask off and we saw how cool it was, then all of a sudden the, the light went on and we thought, hey, this is gonna work. Because we've, we've already experienced lots of failures and that's when you do something new like that and you have an idea, a lot of times you fail at it. 
And so now we're going in the right direction and it's been kind of fun. So look forward to the Zebra Peach kits coming next spring. You can check them out on zebrapeaches.com. Make sure you check out the KSL Greenhouse Show. You can take us anywhere you go on the KSL News Radio app.